What's up guys, Tony here. So in today's video, I'm gonna bring you guys some of the best travel credit cards in terms of airlines. And these credit cards, you will not only get value out of them for the first year, but every single year after that. And they all offer something called companion passes. So similar to what we talked about last week, where you get free hotel nights every single year, you hold those uh, credit cards for. So for these credit cards, you're gonna get free flights every single year. You hold these credit cards for. Remember the trick I showed you guys last week where you can have multiple of these hotel credit cards and you can pull them together to book a nice weekend getaway that can look like this, 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 and this. Well, imagine adding flying to the equation. It makes the possibilities limitless. Today we're going to do a full review on some of the best travel credit cards, in particular airline credit cards, and then we're going to cover who these cards are for, and last but not least, whether or not these are for you at this current moment. Welcome back if you're returning and if you are new, my name is Tony and on this channel we focus on personal finance, we upload every single week. So if you're not yet subscribed and you want to see more content like this every single week, make sure to subscribe with the bell. and. As always, make sure you hit like, it really helps with the channel. And with that out of the way, let's go. So you're looking for a good credit card to keep year after year that you consistently get value out of year after year despite them being an annual fee or not. And also at the same time, you decided that you want to travel the world and experience the world at least once a year. Well, look no further because I'm going to bring you some of the best credit cards to do just that with and at the same time save you some money in the process and you're pretty much going to be paying a fraction of the price. And the best part is these credit cards match perfectly with the hotel credit card strategy that we talked about last week as if they are made for each other. Starting with the WestJet World Elite MasterCard offered by RBC, this credit card has an annual fee of $119, which is offset by the sign-up bonus, which you get right away after making a first purchase. And the sign-up bonus is 350 RBC, 350 uh, WestJet dollars. So what that is is you can basically think of it as credit that you have with WestJet. So basically, $350 worth of credits. They use the annual free night voucher. It's very simple, it's pretty much like what the name says. It's a companion pass, meaning you have to buy your first ticket in full, in full price, and then the second ticket, all you have to pay is $119 plus taxes if you're traveling within Canada and the continental US, and $399 plus taxes if you're traveling anywhere else in the WestJet network, which I would personally not recommend, basically like, 80-90% of the time. It's worth to note that this price listed is for the round trip and also it depends on what class that the first person purchased. For example, if the first person purchased a premium flex, which is the highest tier it can go in terms of the companion pass, the companion pass will also match with that class. However, uh, I mentioned is the highest you can go. You can all go for business class, unfortunately. Even though to use it is not as straightforward as saying just redeem it for a free hotel night every single year, but $119 is a very, very small price to pay if you see yourself traveling with a companion through the WestJet network at least once a year. Depending on how you redeem this companion pass for, it can save you anywhere from hundreds to up to $1,000 in savings. Although you can use the WestJet dollars towards, um, say, like the first pass and then have your companion pass ready as well, I wouldn't recommend you to use it that way. This is because WestJet dollars actually has a special redemption method. It's called member exclusive fares. And uh, what those are is it's basically discounted fares if you can redeem properly. The only caveat is that you must pay the full amount in WestJet dollars so you can see why it would be valuable. Unfortunately, this program right now is not live uh, as of June 25th and apparently they're uh, remaking it so I will keep an out for that. So of everyday earnings you get 2% back 
on WestJet flights and WestJet vacations, which is pretty decent, um, can be beaten by other credit cards. And then there's the everyday spending, which is 1.5% back. It's actually very good because uh, WestJet dollars is worth at least $1. So 1.5% back on everything, that's pretty good for MasterCard. But again, it can be beaten by other credit cards out there. Another really interesting credit card is the MBNA Alaska Worldly MasterCard. So MBNA is owned by TD Bank and uh, the good part about this credit card is that it has a low annual fee again at $99 and its sign up bonus is 30,000 Alaska miles and the uh, threshold to hit that is really low. It's only $1,000 within the first three months. The value of each Alaska mile can vary and it varies a lot depending on how you use it. It could be anywhere from one cent a point to eight cents a point to even higher. Regardless, it will outweigh the low $99 annual fee. So for the first year, you will for sure get your money's worth. For the following years, it's really, really easy to justify the $99 annual fee as long as you and also a partner travels with uh, Alaska at least once. This is thanks to its annual companion pass. Like WestJet, after buying the first ticket in full price, your companion is able to use this companion pass and they're able to buy the second ticket for starting at $99 US dollars and the taxes uh, and plus taxes and the taxes start at $22 so the lowest is going to cost is $121 and it could be more and that's all calculated in US dollars because again Alaska is actually a US owned airline. Needless to say it's very very good value and if you can use it once a year with a companion you will get $99 worth of annual fee paid for with the companion pass. Um, it depends where you go like if you want to say fly over to Hawaii for a uh, vacation, for a nice trip, right? Um, and it also depends on where you are, where you go, and when you go as well. And the uh, savings can vary anywhere from, say, hundreds to over a thousand dollars. For everyday spending, you get three Alaska miles for every dollar spent, which is very good. And then uh, there's one Alaska mile for every dollar spent on everything else, which can be beaten by a lot of the other credit cards. And for some honorable mentions, there's the RBC British Airway credit card. There's the uh, new aeroplane credit cards actually that are coming out in November. I'm very excited for those and I'll probably do a review on those uh, when they come out or um, maybe even before they come out. But uh, these credit cards, in my opinion, it's not really worth it. Uh, so those top tier credit cards uh, for Aeroplan has really high annual fees to begin with. And on top of that, you need to spend $25,000 to uh, unlock these companion passes. And for the British Airways, you need to spend $30,000. And in my opinion, it's just not worth it. And if you're going to spend that kind of money, might as well uh, open more cards for more sign up bonuses, at least from a long term perspective. So who are these credit cards for? And more importantly, uh, are these for you? The age-old question, right? And uh, as always, it really depends, right? It depends. So it depends on um, where you're located, surprisingly, because not all of these cards service your area. Um, it also depends what your travel goals are. If you live in the West Coast, you actually can't go wrong with the MBNA Alaska MasterCards because Alaska Airlines is actually a US airline. And if you live like somewhere in the East Coast, sometimes it might be hard to find seats. However, for WestJet, it is a Canada owned airline and it's actually the second biggest uh, Canadian airline. So if you live in the West Coast, East Coast, you won't have a problem and you can't really go wrong with WestJet. Lastly, ask yourself if you're really going to travel at least once with uh, whatever company you decide to go with. Because at the end of the day, if not used, these passes will go to waste. Furthermore, if you are going to be traveling, are these routes available for one or both of these companies? And also, if they are available, are these the best choices rather than uh, versus a competitor, for example, Aeroplan? Depending on the uses, these cards are arguably better or worse than the hotel cards that we talked about last week. I mean, I think the benefits itself is better, but it's just harder to redeem for. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think which one is better.
That being said though, you can't really go wrong with just opening one or both of these credit cards just for the sake of the Santa bonus because at the end of the day, $350 worth of WestJet credits for $119 and $99 um, annual fee for the Alaska card for 30,000 Alaska points. Like you can't really go wrong with that. You're basically making two to three times, if not more back in value just for the first year. So um, if you're not sure, you can't really go wrong with testing it out in the second year. If you feel like um, you're gonna be traveling, then you can keep it. If not, just cancel it. You can't really go wrong. Some people even choose to churn these credit cards. And what that means is uh, churning is basically people that open and close credit cards very frequently for the Santa bonus. So I have a dedicated video that I explain in detail on that. So I'll link it somewhere above and also down in the description for you guys. Getting credit cards like this and also keeping it for the long term will increase your credit score in the long term. And as a result, like let's say in the future, you, you have a credit card where you pay for a high annual fee for and you don't really get value out of it. You don't really need it. You don't have to think twice about canceling that card and and it impacting your credit score as you do so. I explained that in detail in another video I'll link above and also down in the description full details on what's called keeper credit cards. Hopefully this video brought you guys some clarity on these credit cards and also just got you thinking in case these cards weren't on your radar because it's always fun talking about some of the less talked about credit cards and also it's a really solid card in my opinion and i would say this is at least the top 10 uh, best travel credit card in canada if not the top five if you guys enjoy the video make sure to hit like it really helps with the channel and wait before you go if you're not yet subscribed make sure to subscribe with the bell to see more content just like this one every single week and as always have an amazing day peace